like chairs and because this church wasn't that big. It was just like they had been like coming, but it, this church wasn't that big. It was like medium size, I guess. So I'm sitting by my mom and my dad, and I'm seriously, I get the urge to like throw this to the chairs over there. Well, I didn't do it. I mean, I'm just curious what would happen if what if I would have done it. I didn't do it because where he was when we throw it, it was just like grown adults and like a bunch of girls. And I just, I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't throw it. So we go home. I didn't meet anyone named John. I met a dude, um, he like shook my hand or whatever. His name was similar to John, but it wasn't John. And so I went home, didn't meet anyone named John. And when I started recording this video, I finally figured out why I didn't meet anyone named John. It was because God told me, he said, if you, he told me right before I made this, he said, if you get distracted, you won't understand what I'm saying right. And lately, I've been playing like Roblox and watching YouTube videos. And I've been feeling really bad about that because I wanted to stop doing that, like do something that would actually help me. But I just keep getting distracted by all these like electronic devices. And so I finally understand what he means. He's saying if you keep playing on these electronic devices, he's not saying I can't play them at all. He's saying if you keep playing on them stuff, you're just going to get distracted and nothing's ever going to work out. Is what he was telling me. So when he sent that message, he was trying to tell me that if you don't stop doing things that are hurting you and, and are messing up, you're just going to keep repeating and you're not going to get anywhere so that was a crazy story but yeah that is what he was like trying to tell me and there's like a bunch of other stories like um this this actually happened to me um this was actually a few like a few months ago or so I was like really really sad because I um I've been uh hold on I lost what I was thinking about um so I was really sad because I like draw and stuff. As you can see, my drawings are behind me. I drew some like princesses and stuff. And I was really sad because I was actually considering quitting drawing and stuff because I was just really sad about it. So I was actually considering quitting art altogether, like not quitting it altogether, just not do it as much as I've been and maybe try to do a different hobby, like something else because I have done art since I was really little because my grandpa actually used to do art. And then my brother did some art. He doesn't really do it anymore, but he's pretty good at it, I would say. And my sister Christina, she did some art, but she grew out of it like really quick. So I thought it'd be really cool if I kept doing art. Unlike my other family members that did it, but they don't really do it anymore. So I started doing art when I was really little, like seven or so. And it's just... So at the moment, I was like, this, I think I was 15 at the time. No, I think I was still 16. It wasn't that long ago. It was like four or so months. So I'm thinking about quitting art and trying to pursue some other hobby. So I'm just really sad for like the next couple of days. Like my mom and stuff, even though I was just like super sad. And like I would never tell them why I was sad because I just didn't feel like I needed to. So a couple of days go by or so. And I just fall asleep and I had this dream. I had a dream where I was sitting in like our living room. There was this old guy, like he was old, like older, like probably 60s, 70s. Like he was kind of older. And um, my dad's mom had passed away like a year or so ago, like a year or two ago. And I knew his mom because she lived in a nursing home and we would go and visit her quite a bit. And I just, if you have any family members living in a nursing home, nursing homes, just they're like sad. Like to me, they're sad. So my Nana, she is like the sweetest person you'll ever meet. Like she's so sweet. And um, she like she would help out any way she can. Like even though she couldn't really walk on her own anymore, like she was just basically the only way she'd get out is if we went visit her, we would have to put her in a wheelchair and we would just have to push her around. But that's the only excitement she really got. So. Um, so I had this dream that this old guy was sitting on his couch. I had no idea who this old guy was. Like, I did not know who this old guy was. So this old guy, he grabs my hand like this. Like, he puts one hand over the other, which that's kind of unusual. 
So I never really seen anyone shake hands like that, like put one hand over the other. I was like, that's kind of weird. And then he told me, this is what he said. This is exactly what he said. He said, don't quit art. Like in a very stern voice, like he was serious. Like he said, don't quit art. And then there was a girl sitting by him. I still cannot identify who the girl was. At this time, my nana had been dead for like a year or two. At this time, I could not identify what this girl was or who she was because like, I could only see part of her. So I didn't know who she was. She was wearing a white shirt. And I, my dad actually, so after I had this dream, I went and told mom first. And then I went and told my dad. So I told my dad about this dream. And I explained to him what the old guy did and what he looked like. He was like, oh, my God. He starts, like, saying, oh, my God. He was like, what? That old guy is my, um, I think he's, I don't know if it was a grandpa or something. He said my, he said some family member had recently passed away, like, three days ago. So I was like, oh. And apparently, the description, everything I gave him was the exact, exactly how the old man looked in my dream. He said, and there's no way you would know, there's no way you would know that. He said, my grandpa always holds people's hands with one hand over the other. He said, my grandpa always hold hands like that. He was like, you're giving a perfect description of what he looks like. And then he was like, he only died like three days ago. So I was like, oh, he was like, and my grandpa, if you had a passion and if you were ever thinking about like, quitting it, he always was like very serious about keeping you doing that passion and not quitting it. He said, my dad said that my dad's really into music and stuff. And he plays, he plays a guitar. And he knows some piano, too. He's pretty good at the piano, too. And he said that, I don't know, like I said, I don't even know if it's like his grandpa or something, but he said that he was really, like, if you had a passion or something, like, he really wanted to keep making your passion bigger and bigger and, like, did not want you to quit. So I realized that day, I realized that I had a, like, I actually, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I actually, in that dream, God was basically telling me that I should not quit art. Like basically what he was trying to tell me, he was like, if you quit art, you're going to like be sad and like depressed, like for a long time. So that's when I was like, okay, fine. I'm not quitting art. I'm like, I seriously, I'm like, I'm not quitting art. So yeah, so that was something that was when I decided not to quit art. And now that I think about it, I think the girl that was sitting by him, because my dad has a picture of Anana when she could move and walk and didn't have to be in a bed all the time. And she was like a teenager when this photo was taken. And now that I think about it, the girl actually really looked like Nana, but she wasn't like an, like how I saw her, like when she was in bed, so like an adult. It looked like she was like the teenage version of her. I don't know why, maybe I was supposed to see her like that. Like my Nana, like I said, she was the sweetest person in the world. Like if you needed a leg or something, like she would have gave you her leg. Like she was really sweet. And I know it's sad when you lose someone, but um, she was in a lot of pain and stuff. She was in a lot of pain. So when she did pass, I was sad, but like it wasn't too sad because I knew she was in a better place. Because when she was on earth, she really was just miserable. Like all she could do was lay in bed. Like the only time she got out when we came, like she couldn't even change the TV channel. Like she had to call the nurse to do it for her. Like basically all she was doing was eating and sleeping. Like, it was sad. So when she passed, I knew she was going to a better place. And, like, it was sad, but it was better than seeing her in that bed every day. Just sitting there doing nothing. Hold on, let me go grab something real quick. <clears throat> so I went and grabbed this. This is from um, her funeral. You just open it. It's a heart. I got this because I don't, I to be honest, I think I got this at a funeral and they were just hanging them out. But if you open it up, it's just a cross. It's just a heart and it has a cross in it. And it's just a good way that I never forget about her and I just remember. And yeah, I just never forget her. You never want to forget the people that you love. So I think I'm going to end the video right here because this video is getting kind of long. Well, this is my first video. So like I said, I'm probably going to start uploading every Saturday of me reading the Bible. If I miss a Saturday, it's either, it's probably just because something popped up and I couldn't post for some reason. But yeah.
please subscribe and I hope you like this video.